back to the vaccination story. Um, does anyone know what the number one best-selling item, over-the-counter um, medication in the world is? Not medication, but over-the-counter uh, health-related item. Aspirin. Um, actually, it's sitting on this table. If you look worldwide, and it's not even pronounceable. Can yeah. anyone can anyone read that? What does that say? I don't know. It's oscillo, like oscilloscope. Oscillococcinum. Oscillococcinum. The number one. I read this in the Chicago Tribune, so I know it's true. Uh, I had a, a picture of uh, of this covering half the page, and the other half was an article saying this is the number one best-selling item in the world. And have any of you ever bought it? Okay, we got a few here. We have a few. Um, you're not buying it that often. What makes it number one? It's not number one in the United States because we don't know about this. Um, it's number one throughout the world because everyone else seems to know that rather than take perhaps a flu shot, well, I'll tell you the story. And mine's not quite as dramatic as uh, Dr. Uh, Masood. Well, in some ways it is. Uh, the year was 1976. And uh, Dr. Doogie here um, was an intern. My internship was in Albany, New York, and my first months as an intern, I spent sitting next to the bedside of patients in the intensive care unit as paralysis spread from their feet, up their legs, up into their abdomen, until it hit the lungs and they stopped breathing. Somewhat similar to what Dr. Uh, Masood was describing with his daughter. Um, and then when they stopped breathing, it was my job to uh, put the tube down into the lungs and turn on the breathing machine for them so they would be a, on a, a ventilator. That year was the year of the 1976 swine flu. And what they found was that there were 500 deaths within about three weeks of taking the swine flu shot across the country. There were more deaths from the swine flu shot that year than there were from the flu itself. I had gotten the swine flu shot that year because they lined us up at the hospital and told us it was all a good idea and, and you know, I, well, they said so. I went along with it. I got the shot. I didn't really look into it. You know, I think, you know, it would be safe, but they certainly wouldn't tell me to take something that wasn't safe, uh, would they? Um, but let me tell you, how many flu shots do you think I have had since 1976? Zero. Zero. Nada. Um, I kind of took a look at that situation and said, you know something, I think I want to think twice before someone tells me to do something or to put, inject anything foreign into my body in the future. And uh, I think that started my skeptical outlook at the practice of medicine in many ways in the United States. I'm Dr. Harding, uh, Pauline Harding. I'm uh, a family medicine doctor and uh, internist. Uh, also do integrative medicine uh, down in Aurora, Illinois. We take a different look at things now as a result of what I've seen in medicine over the years. And the 1976 swine flu, I think, is what really started uh, me looking in a different direction uh, when it came to uh, injectables and everything else. And Dr. Masood uh, had mentioned that his doctor had told him that the flu shot was as safe as a can of cola. Well, if that was diet cola, and he talked about formaldehyde in these shots, that's embalming fluid, right? Um, if you take a look at that can of cola, and this is just a, a side comment about cans of cola, um, the, uh, the uh, artificial sweetener in there, aspartame, breaks down into three, at least three toxic substances, one of which is formaldehyde, embalming fluid. And uh, Martin Slater here, one of our great acupuncturists in the area, will tell you what the other two are, because I can't pronounce those big words. Um, but in any event, uh, think twice about that can of cola they were comparing it to. Uh, so in terms of the flu vaccine, I have not had one. And I work in a family practice, so that's a relatively safe profession, right? You don't get people coming in sick every day, coughing on you all day long, right? Right? <laughs> Little kids, big kids. Uh, not had the flu shot since 1976. And thanks to that lady in the boy run booth over there, what I do now, and she and her friends, 
and this hasn't been scientifically proven, but they do it, and uh, the, the doctors that uh, teach homeopathy, because uh, this is a homeopathic uh, remedy, starting in September each year, they take a dose a week, a little dose a week, uh, throughout flu season. And being on the, uh, the cheap side, I don't bother doing that because I am one of those really lucky people. When I take a homeopathic remedy that works not in 10 days, not in 10 hours, not in 10 minutes, but lucky here, it works in 10 seconds for me. So I have come down with that, the headache from hell, you know the one when you come down with the flu, you ache all over, and the headache where you can't even think anymore, your brain's sort of on, on slow fire there. Um, and the thought passes that your mind that if you had to go on living like this, you're not sure if it would be worth it. And you're by no way suicidal, it's just you don't feel like living if you have to keep feeling this way. Um, I will take a dose of this, and in 10 seconds, the headache, the aching, just sort of melt away. I remember uh, one year I did that, and um, I, um, I sort of said, oh, I must have been imagining that I didn't really have the flu. Uh, because it not only wipes away the symptoms, it seems to wipe away your memory of having had them, which is kind of nice. Uh, but in about three hours, all of the aching came back. The headache came back, the aching all over the body, the joints aching. And I go, mm, no, this is the flu. Uh, took another dose, cleared up in 10 seconds, never needed another dose. So uh, the vial I had had 84 uh, pellets in it, and I've got like 82 left. And it cost, I think, a whopping $8 at the time. Um, so you can sort of one vial can be passed around the entire neighborhood. Okay, now because I grew up in 1950s America uh, and had, I fought a lot of shots in those days. But you won't believe how many they're having the babies get now. It's incredible. They're developing new shots every day for. I, mean, I, I swear they have shots now for allergy to your toasters. So I don't know. Um, there's just no end to what they can come up with. Um, the. Um, for those of us who've already had all kinds of vaccinations, uh, these same folks and the homeopathic people make vials of something called the one you'd be interested in for undoing the long-term side effects of vaccines. Uh, did I say long-term? There are no long-term side effects in vaccinations, are there? Hmm? No one ever told you about side effects of vaccinations when you had them, did they? If you go back 200 years ago, when the first vaccinations uh, were de uh, developed, uh, there were two groups. And we don't hear about that in this country, but, you know, there's Dr. Jenner who came up with the smallpox vaccine. And then there were the homeopaths who said, hmm, we're not so sure that's a great idea, because after people take that, what we're seeing is they get chronic conditions. One of them is little lumps and bumps, you know, like bumps like that, benign tumors throughout the body, including all those, a lot of times the beauty marks, uh, you know, the little moles on the face and things. A lot of times that's a side effect, long-term side effect of vaccinations. Um, I had a patient, and another thing, oh, and I see him right over there. 